and start investigation day one. So worth it, yeah. Oh, no, I didn't want to go back. Oh, wait. I do, okay. Phoenix! In the middle of the Space Center bombing trial, we had another bombing incident. This one destroyed courtroom number four. <sighs> it's fine. Hey, what's going on, Pyro? Welcome on in. How are you doing today? Furthermore, Apollo suffered massive injuries from being there when the bomb was set off. Unfortunately, Juniper Woods was fingered as the courtroom bomber. Oh, unfortunate. Athena and I knew she had to be innocent, so we took her case on. Hey, this seems familiar. We managed to clear Mrs. Wood's name. So this didn't- yeah, it's fine. But Apollo sustained further injuries when he was attacked by Ted Tenate. Dun dun dun! This was from the very first part of the game. December 19th. Oh dang, it's almost Christmas again. Apollo is a tough guy, but this is taking its toll on him. Yeah, poor guy, being attacked by Tonate like that on top of all his other injuries. Man, he looks like he's gonna be a mummy soon. Apollo is resting at the nearby Hickfield Clinic. No! I've had some experience with that place myself. What an awful turn of events. I never thought he'd land in a hospital of all places. Yeah, almost Christmas means it wasn't Christmas! Exactly. Egg exactly. You must miss him too, huh? Now that you don't have anybody to tease. Don't worry, he's young. He'll heal quickly and be back before you know it. Remember me? I was 30 years old and knocked into a pole, but I'm fine. It's okay, he's only your brother. Oh wait, you probably still don't know that. Uh, it's been a while since I last saw Trucy. He looks so down. Oh no. Speaking of that, you should probably start saving for it. Oh yeah. Probably, <laughs> considering that you, you go kind of nuts. We won the court case, yet nobody feels much like celebrating. Everybody's so sad. <sighs> Ugh. All right, enough of this, people! This is no time to be moping around. Now try those eyes, both of you. Uh, you're the only one who's crying, Athena. Technicalities. Look, we have work to do. We have to take over. Uh, take over what exactly? Apollo Space Center case, of course. As no verdict's been reached, there's still a chance. You don't, Yeah, you don't have room for it? That makes sense. I agree with Athena. We should pick up Mr. Starbucks' defense. We have to avenge our fallen comrade, right, Daddy? Apollo hasn't exactly fallen. He's still alive, you know. Good. Now that that's settled, let's get going. Come on, we gotta run. Yeah, I know, RC. That was more important than a lot of furniture. Wait, right now? We better not be running the whole way. There she goes. I better go catch up. Can you take care of the office, Trucy? Sure thing, Daddy. Let's be careful out there. In the meantime, I'm gonna bake some cookies and fill up my magic panties for you. Stop. Trucy seems to be feeling a little bit better. I wish she would stop giving me those things, though. I can always count on Athena to perk everybody up with her enthusiasm. Oh, she's back. Don't mind me, just forgot a few things. <laughs> Wallet, phone, the documents, my bag. Sounds more like you forgot everything. And always count on Athena for that, too. All right, you two. Let's be careful out there. Okay, Trucy, bye. Okay, we're back here. So our client is one Solomon Starbuck. He's so famous, even I've heard of him. About how should we... Oh, really? Wow. That's right! He's a super famous astronaut who works at the Cosmo Space Center. He was actually up in outer space seven years ago. You seem to know quite a bit about him. Now I'm all excited to meet the man. 
Oh, he's gonna be depressed, isn't he? Yep, he's depressed! When the child acts more like an adult than the adult, yeah. <sighs> wow, that was the longest sigh I've ever heard. I have a bowl of potato salad and key lime cupcakes. Oh, that sounds good. I'll probably eat more of my, um, my lemon bread later on. Apollo told me all about you. You're Phoenix Wright. Apollo's mentor, right? Yeah. Share pizza and cupcake. We'll share all our food. What kind of, what toppings did you get, Chica? What's everybody's choice pizza toppings? I mean, I'm a sucker for just pepperoni, but I also like sausage or... I like chicken and bacon with like, um, with like the white sauce instead of red sauce. You're not sharing. Oh, okay. Then that's fine. <sighs> Ye yes, that's right. Hmm. Mentor has a nice ring to it. Don't worry about a thing, Mr. Starbuck. Mr. Wright and I have got you covered. Uh, and you're the new kid that Apollo told me about. Wait, don't I know you from somewhere? Huh? You mean, other than at your trial? I don't think so. I guess so. My mistake. It's Philly cheesecake. <laughs> Cheese oh, nice. Cheesecake is good. Pizza time is just plain cheese with extra sauce. I do always get extra sauce, because I like, I don't know, I really like tomato sauce. You prefer Deluxe Supreme? I can, I'll eat pretty much anything on a pizza, other than I haven't had anchovies, but it's mostly because the smell is really strong. Like, I like fish, but yeah. Yeah, Philly steak. No, 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 I figured that's what you meant. You sent in a photo. Oh, the, the comic you were talking about? Yeah. It's okay. You don't have to share. I'll share with you anyway, Chica. My mistake. Ugh. <sighs> My memory isn't so clear. My mind and body are kaput. Same goes for my life. I mean, I'm so astronomically unlucky that I had a bomb go off in the middle of my trial. Trying to defend me would be like trying to enter the stratosphere without a spacecraft. I have had pizza that had, like, squid on it, and that was in Japan, and it was really good, but squid is completely different from anchovies, so... Yikes. He seriously gotta stop depressing himself. Cheer up, Mr. Starbuck. Besides, you said something about entering the stratosphere. That just means we'd shine like shooting stars, right? Like shooting stars, huh? You know, you're right. Why didn't I think of that? If not, you share everything aside from fries, steak, and nachos? No, I gotcha. Okay. I'll just have to catch you in, at a time where you're... Well, I don't make people share their food anyway. I mean, like, if they want to share, I'll, I'll accept. But I'm never like, oh, that looks great. I'm going to take some. Because th th that's not good because not everybody likes to share food. It's all about consent. Everything is about consent. Yeah, after all, that's what we were all put on this earth to do, right? To shine like stars. Yes, I shouldn't mention the fact that shooting stars burn out in a flash. Oh yeah, here we go! Three, two, one, to the stratosphere and beyond! I don't like this guy. He's dumb. Yeah, I feel alive now. You can go ahead and ask me anything you want. And a child ice cream, um. Wait, what? Uh, the ch chocolate, I guess? Don't mind sharing, but if you're legit, yeah, no, 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 same. Like, I will just devour things. Is that really all it takes? So, you have no memory at all of the incident. <sighs> I'm so ashamed. My memory of the time is as black and clouded as a dark nebula. Still, it's strange you don't remember a thing, and I feel kind of, well, I don't really feel bad, but I have friends, like, when I eat with them, because, I mean... I don't eat a lot, but I still eat more than, like, some of my other friends do. Like, especially my lady friends. Um, so if I hang out with them, they're, they're always, like, sharing stuff with me, and I'm like, I just kind of eat everything, so. I mean, I'll ask them if they want to try anything beforehand, but I don't actively, like, they will, like, throw stuff onto, like, my plate or something, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'll, I'll eat that. Still, it's strange you don't remember a thing. Are you sure you didn't take one of those anti-anxiety pills like they said at the trial? 
Yeah, I told him that I don't know anything about drugs. I never took any medication. It is true I developed a fear of space because of what happened seven years ago. And I was taking medication secretly every now and then when my anxiety got bad. Having a fear of space is not something an astronaut can brag about, you know? Oh, the so-called Hat One Miracle? That must have been a terrifying experience. Friends, family, they're full and I'm done with food. Yeah, exactly. That's what happens with me like every time. It's almost always like fries and stuff like that. They're like, here's some more. And I'm like, okay. But I'm still an astronaut at heart, come what may. I would never take drugs that might impede my performance just before a launch. That launch meant everything to me. That's more certain than the theory of relativity. It seems like a completely different person now. Well, no, that's, I mean, I'm not, I'm not expecting you to just hand your food to me, RC. I'll just watch you dreamily from across the table and be like, oh yes, this is how a true woman eats. Actually, I don't know how you eat, but uh, yeah, just like, it's just weird. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's because I'm a bigger guy or I'm just a guy, but anytime I'm around someone, and especially when I was working at Walmart, like granted, this just might be an older lady thing, but they would always, even if I had food, like sometimes I wouldn't eat on my lunch because I just wasn't hungry. But even if I had food, they'd always be like, here's some more. And I'm like, okay, thanks. I didn't, it, okay, I'm not gonna like, be like, no, I don't want this because food is delicious, but burgers and eat. Yeah. Well, me and my friends, we, like usually the, they'll ask first, but Jen, I don't care if I eat stuff that they've like bitten off of. Like we'll share straws. I don't. Like, I, they're not carrying anything, you know? But, yeah. When they eye you for food, oh no, yeah. This is the f face of the astronaut I know. You're a growing lad when you need to eat. Yeah, f wheels in a five course meal. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, I'm, o I'm 30 years old. I'm not growing anymore. <laughs> Unless I keep eating this much, then I will grow in a direction that I don't want to grow in. Tranquilizers were found in your system. Like, if, if people don't like sharing straws, then I'll be like, oh, okay, I'll just use my own. But, like, a lot of my friends were just kind of like, hey, you want to try this? Cool, whatever. It's, yeah, you know, it's fine. <sighs> yeah, see, that's the thing. But I don't know why. I'm done for. If you didn't take them, then maybe someone slipped them to you? Exactly, that's what I thought. It must have been the real culprit. My medication was in my locker. Anybody could have gotten their hands on it. Maybe the real culprit also planted the detonator switch in your pocket. Yeah, that's gotta be it. I've been framed. I'll say they even managed to plant your prints on the switch before slipping in. It's a real possibility. Do you remember anything else that might be relevant? You can carry your pizza. You had one slice. Wait, you had... Oh, okay. Are, are you okay? Or you just weren't that as hungry as you thought you were? When he orders, yeah, no, that's what I was about to say. Actually, yeah, if somebody's actually sick, then yeah, I understand that. But I've done that before. Like, not just that, or when you like prepare food, or you, you like prepare not even a lot of food, but you take one bite and you're just suddenly like, I don't, I'm not hungry. And you're like, I hate this. I've done that before and I hate it. Yeah, I'm sorry, Chica. I wish you could eat more. I mean, as long, it, hopefully you're at least content. Because it sucks when you like eat a little bit, like I said, and then you're just not hungry and you're like, I know I need to eat more, but if I try to eat more, it's just gonna suck for everyone. Leftovers for the week, yeah, exactly. Anything at all, no matter how small, like uh, about the murder weapon, for example. Hmm, that knife, I think it came from one of the Space Center's utility kits. Utility kits? Yeah, staff who work on machinery a lot are given these special tools to use. All the technicians have them, so I doubt you could prove whose knife it is. Utility knife updated in the court record. Oh, because you ate wings first. That makes sense. I've done that before. Like, if I get Pizza Hut and I get wings and pizza, I always eat the wings first because I love the wings and they taste best, like, fresh. And then I'm like, okay, I'll have, like, yeah, one or two slices of pizza and the rest can go away. Now you're hungry. Oh no, I'm sorry. Well, I mean, food is good. There's no denying that. As I recall, your last trip into space was seven years ago, right? Hmm, that's right. It was a 
pretty rough experience. Well, I guess I shouldn't call them wings. I usually get the boneless like chicken. And people hate it if you call those wings because they're technically not. They're more like nuggets, better nuggets. Your tummy's acting up. No, I'm sorry. It's still acting up? I hope he gets to feeling better soon. It sucks not being able to eat when you want to. During that mission, we had all kinds of problems with the craft. You did? What kind of problems? Uh, power failure, oxygen leakage, busted radio, cracked windows, loose control column. Cracked windows in space is the worst. The heat shield came off as we were entering the atmosphere. I, I thought I was a goner, but I managed to make it somehow with the popsicles and ice packs from the freezer. No wonder they dubbed it the Hat One Miracle. It's a miracle you made it back. Space is a boundless place. That's why it continues to capture people's imaginations. But the vastness of space shows us how insignificant we are in the scheme of things. I don't know if I have one of those here. I mean, I think the last place I got stuff from was like Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, if I had the opportunity to go to space, I'm not sure if I'd take it because there's so many chances that you could just die. Oh, is that B-dubs? I keep forgetting. Oh, because Wild Wings is double you. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm so bad with things. I was like, like, yeah, I love this one. It's like, that's the same thing. These are the same pictures. They don't exist by you? Most ah, oh, that sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think I've had, like, 50-50 experiences with Pizza Hut chicken, but I also, like, I get the points, so sometimes I'll be able to get free stuff, and I'm like, I might as well get the chicken. And then I'm like, ah, oh, this is all right. But, yeah. How do you not? Well, because I don't think of, I the last time I had Buffalo Wild Wings was like probably last year, actually. <laughs> you know, so it's it just it kind of slips my mind. I eat a lot at home uh, and then I have like a Burger King and a church is nearby um, and Sonic sometimes. I just I just it's 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 one of those things where I only really tend to get stuff if like it comes to mind. I've had Pizza Hut the most probably because they had like really cheap pizzas and I could make it last a while, but yeah. No, people, oh well, yeah, people call it th that here. I just didn't think about it. I was just bad. The darkness just goes on and on forever and ever and ever without end. Wow, that's depressing. There was nobody else there. Nobody was going to come save me. I was all alone. All alone with nothing to listen to but the sound of my own breathing and heartbeat. I kept scrambling to make repairs, but I couldn't keep my hands from shaking. Okay, I can understand why this guy needs some anxiety pills from time to time. Salt and vinegar. Oh, those are good. I really like um, garlic. Man. Or lemon pepper. I mean, lemon pepper is just really good with chicken, but yeah. Experience like that would make anyone if anybody afraid to go into up into space. Outer space. What do you know about space? It's very large. Not trying to kill vampires. With the experience you had, weren't you dreading the mission? What? Uh, no way. Uh, of course not. Even now I want to go up to space so bad I can barely stand it. I want to shake off the Earth's gravity at escape velocity and spin around weightless. But you have to admit it was pretty harrowing. Weren't you even a tiny bit afraid? I was afraid. Of course I was. Still am. But space is man's final frontier. An unknown world. The cosmic truth is out there waiting for us somewhere. <laughs> cosmic truth, huh? I guess there are people looking for the truth in every walk of life. No matter how afraid I am, I'm sure I can manage. If I give in to my fear, I'll never find out the truth. As long as I don't give up, I can keep up the fight. One thing's for sure, Mr. Starbuck's passion for space is undeniably the real deal. The victim. Yeah, I don't know. Thankfully, I don't have to worry too much about like eating a lot of garlic stuff because I don't have a significant other or anybody that I have around that I do anything with or that I'm like super close to all the time. So I don't have to worry about having horrible garlic breath. 
Plus, I if, usually if I eat something like really spicy or, or like garlicky anyway, I tend to brush my teeth afterwards just because it feels weird. The victim, Clay Taran. He was kind of like your protege, wasn't he? So it is under. Yeah, so it's fine. You guys have probably gotten so used to garlic, you don't even care about the smell. Well, it wasn't a big exaggerated deal like Master and Apprentice or anything like that, but Clay did think of me as his mentor. The mentor and the protege. What a combination they must have been. <sighs> With his encouragement, I knew I could get over my fear and go back into space, but now... No vampires were all right. Well, yeah, I mean, in Texas, vampires can't survive because the sun is so hot, it seeps in through, like, whatever they try to hide in. They'd probably explode just crossing, like, the state line into Texas. Sorry, vampires. Which is weird. Well, nah, never mind. I was thinking of, like, the Southern Vampire Diaries, but I don't think that happened in Texas. I think that was a different state. Well, it happened in Texas. You, you know, I... I can't even remember, like, what that's... Well, I, all I know is that that's what True Blood is based off of, and there's just a whole lot of sex. Virginia. Okay. It's an... Yeah, because usually when people say South, they don't mean Texas. They mean more to the East and North of us, like Virginia, Kentucky, all of the other places in that area. For Vampire... Yeah. Or is it Vampire Diaries? Is that what that one is? I can't, I get my vampire stuff confused because I don't, I don't really care that much about it. Yeah, true. Play must have been very encouraging, huh? Yeah, it's funny, really. Whenever I'd hear him shout, you're fine. I always got the feeling everything really was going to be just fine. You're fine. Apollo says I'm fine and you're fine all the time, too. And I always feel encouraged, too, whenever I hear him shout it. Yeah, Clay and Apollo were best buds. They used to come to the Space Center a lot, ever since they were high school kids. One day out of the blue, Clay even told me he wanted to be my protege. <laughs> Those two hung out and around the Space Center so much, they were like a part of the staff. One time during Zero-G training, I started to panic a little bit, and the two of them took turns shouting, You're fine! Over the radio! You know, yeah, exactly. Why, what's up, RC? It's a simple thing, but it was exactly what I needed to hear. So I'm fine and you're fine were like Apollo and Clay's secret phrases, huh? I wish I could ask Apollo more about Clay and their relationship now. Speaking of Clay, how do you suppose he climbed down the ladder with you over his shoulder? <sighs> the Lone Star. Oh, God. Wow. Are you going to watch that then and see more Texas-isms that may or may not be true. Sorry, but I can't even begin to imagine. But he actually did climb down that ladder, so a way has to exist. <sighs> From the freedom of space to the walls of a cell. That prosecutor said the dark night sky isn't half bad through the barred windows. You're fine, Solomon. Soul Starbuck is fine. Everything is gonna be all right. Hmm? And Athena Sykes is fine. Come on, Mr. Wright, you too. Do I really have to? Phoenix Wright is fine. I can't hear you! F F Phoenix Wright is fine! We'll get you back into space yet, Mr. Starbuck. Believe in your own innocence and have faith in us. We're all Southerners or Cowboys? Yeah, that's true. That's like the major... I'm like... Dude, I barely see anybody wearing a Stetson, like, ever. Plenty of people own horses around here, but they're not, like, riding them everywhere. Like, damn, people, you guys need to calm the hell down. Apollo believed in you wholeheartedly, and that's good enough for me. I believe in you, too. Thank you, both of you. I'll put my faith in you. And I vow to make it into space. All I need first is a not guilty verdict. Yeah, well, because people just really like cowboy boots. I mean, some people just like the way they feel. Um, but yeah. Even then, a lot of people, like, I just wear sneakers all the time. I don't have any cowboy boots. They're expensive. And you have to walk differently in them because you, have, you literally walk heel to toe in boots. You know? Because they're very rigid on the bottom. Like, sneakers, 
You just kind of, you walk normal, but yeah. Oh yeah, of course they have boots. Especially motorcycle cops, but boots are probably the best things to wear while on a motorcycle because they afford the most protection, like from wind and rain and everything. Sure feels nice to reassure ourselves every now and then that we're all fine. Okay then, Mr. Wright. Let's get our investigation of the Space Center started. Pronto! Good idea, let's go. Yeah, I think it, I think that's also a part of um, entrance. Entrance to what? Like you have to walk slightly differently, so you probably work different muscle groups when you wear boots as well. Because I remember like not wearing boots for a while and then wearing boots. I was like, man, this feels like weird. But you know, it is how what it is. Yeah, December nineteenth, Cosmo Space Center. Wow, I was wondering what kind of place the Space Center would be. It almost looks like an amusement park of the future. Yeah, did you know that they even let public, the public see their rockets up close? Oh, so check it out. Look at how brightly the Giaxa's logo shines in the sunlight above the entranceway. I really dig the stars and rockets motif they got going. Yaxa, huh? Isn't that the new name of the Federal Space R&D program? Yeah, but why the strange acronym? I mean, what's yeah supposed to stand for? Galaxy? If that were it, then it, the whole thing would be something like Galaxy Exploration Agency. Which, if you ask me, I'd have abbreviated to Gaxa, or even Gaia. Hmm, I guess so. Everyone in England said we'd win. Oh, okay. So did it, did it finally finish? Is it over? Will you be able to not hear that anymore, RC? Wearing them though. It's, yeah. Wedges are good for that. They lost. Yay. Well, yeah, because I know you were just really annoyed by all the things people were saying. Oh, I know. Maybe the person who came up with the name just really likes the letter Y. This exchange is beginning to feel oddly like deja vu. Anyway, this place is more than just a research facility. It's also a tourist attraction. Tourist attraction, don't make me laugh. It's a monument to the human race. Galactic scooter, full speed ahead. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no. Oh, okay. Oh God, I got scared. I thought it was going to be Wendy Oldbag because she does security personnel stuff. Yikes, who's this geezer and what's he want? Look upon me and look well, behold the great power of space science. Oh, that's Yuri? Uh, pardon me, but you are. My glorious name is Yuri Cosmos. I am the director of the Cosmos Space Center, the center of the cosmos. <laughs> Put the radio back on without hearing the same song. Yeah, I know. And then they'd probably see how hard it was to actually do things. The fans are always so, like, nuts, too. Makes you think of Drake from Generation 3 Pokemon? Maybe. Uh -da -da -da. All right. Take care. What care? Okay. Think you're going to hit the sack. All right. Have a good one, ecstatic. Thank you so much for stopping by and hanging out. Oh god, she's sweating so much. And in England made her co Oh, wow, that's so Well, yeah. People are dumb like that. Uh boss, that was pretty groan inducing. If this person is the Space Center's director, then that means... Aha! Uh -huh. So you were one of the first to discover Clay's body, weren't you? Yeah, the first to find the victim were the director and... Candace Arm. That is correct! I was honored to be the very first man in all of space and time to discover the body! But this talk of the incident 
Are you by any chance the space police? Wow, you're acting awfully shifty already. You can't tack the word space onto just old, any old thing, you know? We're Mr. Starbucks' lawyers. We're here to investigate this case. Oh, and we're or Earth lawyers, by the way. Oh, I see, yes, I've heard about you. In that case, by my esteemed privilege, I grant you permission to investigate. I trust you are appropriately grateful. Now go ahead, have at it. Wow, this guy already seems like an asshole. I can already tell he's gonna be nothing but trouble. Don't let him hear you say that or you'll see what trouble really is. Let's just be professional and ask him about when he found the body, okay? Gary Cosmos. So as director, what do you do here at the Space Center specifically? Defend peace across the galaxy and promote space development in this country. No matter what obstacles stand in our way, we keep going for the sake of mankind. Uh, I believe I use the word specifically in my question. Attention all personnel to your brake stations. Prepare for brake. How oh, I get it. You just wander around and tell people what to do in a self-important manner on your Segway. That is exactly right, because I am an important man. My manner is important. Uh, Mr. Wright, this man doesn't get sarcasm. Well, there's bound to be some people like that here in the boundlessness of space. What's that? You want to know what it is that makes me important specifically? Very well. I will tell you that I was the central figure of the Hat One project. <laughs> You may proceed to be appropriately impressed. Now go ahead, have at it. I might be more impressed if I knew what he did for it, specifically. Could you tell us what you know about the incident from the other day? Hmm, I refuse. Oh, what? Explaining is a job for common folk, not the director of the center of the cosmos. My testimony, which will go down in space history, will be heard in the courtroom. Man, I also hate this guy. Is there anyone I don't hate in this game? I don't know, we're on episode four. I mean, I, uh, well, Robin's crazy, but she's all right. Hugh got better, still sucks like overall. Well, I think once I figured out he was dumb, I started to really warm up to him. Hey, Chica. Oh, Lash, welcome. Welcome everybody from Lash's stream. How are you guys doing? And the fail tried to do second time. He was past that thing he killed and witness and maybe, maybe he was trying to kill Starbuck because he's like, you're too famous. I hate it. Just like every other thing. Hey, Stripes, welcome on in. Yeah. Hello, Dixie. What do you mean? I thought I... Did I not say that? I think I was gearing up to say it and I got raided. All right, you were doing more of the, the random... Are you getting close to the end? Lash? I feel like you've been doing it for a while. You'll like Blackwell by the time you finish? Probably. But there's a lot of people that I have not liked. Did I say hey, Chica? Oh. Oh, because you're, you're, both, you're both pink. Sorry. Well, I, I always say hey to you, Chica. In case I missed the first time. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're making it through. I don't know. It, it's just, it's really funny because I like Final Fantasy VIII and I know a lot of people don't. So whenever I like, and I know you don't, but you've been, well, you said you were liking the randomizer, but it's still starting to get to the point where you're like, I'm just ready to, well, I know I'm not colorist. It's not my fault. I have to look at different names and sometimes they have the same color. You missed one or two harsh words on the story? Yes, one or two. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. But uh, apparently RC was is happy because they were like chanting something and it was just getting really annoying because they would not stop. Like, and now everybody has to stop because they didn't win. What? So that doesn't mean, does that mean you'll be taking the stand tomorrow? That is correct! I will be the most glorious witness in the history of mankind! 
I'm not sure if he really understands what being a witness is all about. Looks like Director Cosmos is the type that only talks about what he wants to talk about. Then let's at least try to ask him about the things he might be willing to open up about. About Hat 1. Almost every... Really? I don't... Mine have just been all over the place, like 11s and stuff like that. No, the... No, she is not. She's like half that or less than half that. You're going to play the lottery when you're 55? Do it. The hat one was a rocket that was launched into space seven years ago, correct? And despite numerous problems, it somehow made its way back home. Hmm, I suppose it is a part of my job to educate ignorant young folk like you. Very well, I will impart to you the complete story of the Hat One Project. Oh, uh, thank you very much? Ugh. Hat One's noble mission was to collect samples from an asteroid, and Mr. Starbuck was the pilot for that flight. Eventually, the Hat One reached its planned orbit. From where it launched the Hope Probe towards the asteroid belt. From there, the Hope Probe began its long, lonely journey into the far reaches of space. Then, after a terrifying struggle, the Hat One returned safely to Earth. That struggle was when the incident known as the Hat One Miracle occurred, right? Uh, correct, and... Oh, yeah. Correct. I... Who said that? Athena said that. I don't know. I, I can't tell if their faces aren't there. I'm gonna buy 100 scratch tickets to see how much money you lose. I mean, if you buy like $100 ones, there's a chance you could at least make some of that back, but yeah. Correct. And it was truly a miracle. Of course, they had, they just had to turn the ordeal into a movie. As for the Hope Probe, it did eventually arrive safely at its destination. It obtained a few samples from the asteroid and returned to Earth but a few days ago. So, uh, what kind of samples are they? What's in them? The samples are scheduled for analysis in the near future. Wait, there isn't a lottery in Hawaii? Really? Maybe I'm just too used to being in Texas where it's kind of like a big deal. We haven't had time since they just came back the other day before Terran's murder. Regrettably, we've had no time to inspect the samples due to everything that has occurred. He at no point has told me what role he played in this that makes him so important, other than the fact that he's just the director. But this puts our space development program ahead of other countries by several years. Uh, that's quite impressive. Guess this guy isn't just a loudmouth braggart after all. No, he didn't do shit. He literally, he's taking credit. This guy is Elon Musk. He's taking credit for everybody who did the research for him. Sorry, I'm probably gonna get a lot of Mu like Musk fanboys on my ass putting this up on the YouTube, but I don't care. Just scratching 100 tickets would take, yeah, probably. You could hire somebody with the winnings you might earn. In the golden age of space development, our predecessors were successful in bringing a moon rock back. That is the greatest achievement in history of this space center. The public fell in love with space and all of its glorious potential. Uh, a moon rock, huh? I remember that being big. Our endeavors with the moon rock lives on in our work with these asteroid samples. I want to bestow new hopes and dreams for the future upon mankind once again. That is my mission as the man who stands at the center of the cosmos. I hear there's lots of research into moon rocks and stardust from asteroids these days. They say the results could potentially have a huge impact on all of civilization. It's like we're in a new space race with every other country out there. What? Bite your tongue, it's not for anything so base as money or politics. It's all for the brilliant future that awaits mankind, and all for my illustrious mission. Okay, that sounds pretty selfish. With the recent budget cuts, my staff tells me finances are tight, but I won't hear it. 
Hmm. I guess even a space program has to watch its budget. Yep. Uh, by the way, you seem awfully knowledgeable about this kind of thing, Athena. Huh? Oh, well, you know, I thought I'd better brush up <laughs> for the case. Is that so? Oh, yeah, it's true. Well, I will be on my way. As you can see, I'm a very busy and very important man. You literally do nothing except be the director. Galactic Scooter, fire up the main engine, max battle speed, and engage. That thing is surprisingly fast. I guess we'd better get going too. You bet, let's make it so. Okay, I guess we're going inside to the boarding lounge. Wait, wasn't this one of the places that was exploded? Why is the body all the way over there? I thought it was in front of the door. Summer 19th, Cosmo Space Center, boarding lounge. Oh man, that spinning chair in the top is gonna like trip me out. Also, why is there a seahorse? Or, I don't know what that is. So this is where Mr. Terran was murdered. Yeah, this is the lounge. Let's see that diagram of the, the police made again. Right now, we're in the main building here on the right side on the third floor. Oh no, the second floor is what got blown up. The second floor and the rocket. Yeah. Clay and Mr. Starbuck fled here from launch pad one after the explosion. You there, no admittance without express permission. We're Mr. Starbucks's lawyers. We've come to investigate. Sorry, nobody gets in without permission. Not even the police superintendent. Can't have Detective Fulbright getting mad at me. Hm. So Detective Fulbright is here, huh? Yeah, he's in the launch pad one corridor. Go get clearance from him and then we'll talk. Leave it to me, I'm great at getting intel out of Detective Fulbright. Let's see, what trick should I use on him today? I don't know if I should be grateful or afraid. So to get to the launch pad one corridor, can we even get in there? We just have to go through that door with the blue rocket on it, I think. Wait, that door... It looks awfully familiar. Good eye there, boss. This is the door Clay and Mr. Starbuck used during their escape from the launch pad. That, that explains it. The fingerprint system has been deactivated, so I think we can just pass through. Okay, I was about to say, we can't get in there without clearance. Now come on, let's go! Okay, well, I guess we'll investigate this room later. That's a robot, just cleaning. <gasps> the robot's the murderer! Even in space, safety first. Hmm. So, this is it, huh? This is the corridor the, user, the two of them used in their escape. Yep, this is the only thing connecting Launch Pad 1 with the main building. I see police tape down at the other end. Guess we won't be looking at the launch pad. After the explosion, the whole corridor must have been filled with smoke. And the launch pad itself was probably a sea of flames. Must have been pretty scary for them. Now, where could Detective Fulbright be? Hey, I think that's him over there. Hmm, what should I do? Which path is the path of justice? He seems to be lost. That's funny. This corridor is a straight shot. Huh? Oh, it's you lawyer people! Welcome to the Space Center! Enjoying a relaxing day off, are you? Here for a little rocket sightseeing? Uh, we're here to investigate the scene, same as you. Do you have any info to share? Boss, if he acts all reluctant to give us information... We hit him with a whatever shall we do act! I'm sure he'll fall for it. Got it! Are we trying to catch the unruly family dog here or something? Info on the case, huh? All right, I'll gladly share some with you. Hmm? What just happened? Detectives and lawyers seeking truth and justice side by side. I like it. Just take whatever you want from me, you info bandits. I'm in a generous mood today. I don't know, there's something weird about Detective Fulbright today. Well, we need information, so let's run with it. If you say so. Okay, the crime scene. 
Uh, Detective Fulbright, could you give us permission to investigate the crime scene? There's an officer on guard and we can't get in. Oh, whatever shall we do? That's an easy one. I'll let him know over there to let you in. Investigate to your heart's content. Take a week if you need it, a month even. Shall I have some snacks delivered? One of my men gives a mean neck rub. The fact that you know that is kind of scary. Uh, no, that's okay, but thanks. Definitely not the Fulbright I know. Detective Fulbright is acting sickeningly sweet. It's kind of gross, actually. Do you think he hit his head or something? Who knows? Whatever the case, it's making our lives way easier. What happened exactly? Yeah. You were here at the Space Center at the time of the incidents, weren't you, Detective? That's right! I was here on a security assignment! Uh, the police are required to secure rocket launches now. I didn't know that. Um, yes, well, you know us to serve and protect. <laughs> I bet he was here just to see the rocket launch. The explosions occurred while I was here on duty, so I started leading the evacuation. He's leaving out a lot of details, but okay. Could you tell us more about the, what happened? Of course, a bomb went off on the second floor of the main building. Right after that, the one over in Launchpad 1 also blew sky high. So I immediately instruct the visitors and employees to evacuate to the shelter. You're gonna crash for now, kinda dead. Yeah, no, no, no problem. Thank you so much for being here, Lash, and thank you for the raid. I'm glad that you had a good stream today. And I hope that you enjoy the rest of your evening. The shelter? That's right! There's an evacuation shelter in the basement of the Space Center. It's there for accidents and emergencies and the like. So where were you when the bomb first bomb went off? I was on duty on the fourth floor. It was quite the madhouse, I tell you. The elevator wasn't working on account of the explosion. And the stairs on the second floor were destroyed, so we couldn't go that way. Then wasn't it impossible to get down to the basement shelter? No, we lowered an emergency ladder from a fourth floor window and escaped that way. It was a folding ladder, so it wasn't very stable, but at least it reached the ground. After I secured the ladder, I left to take another look around for any survivors. Once everyone else got out safely, I made my way down too and headed to the shelter. Wow, what an ordeal, but climbing down an emergency ladder kind of sounds fun. Thank you for your or thank you for your answers, detective. They were very helpful. Just a moment, I have some more information to share with you. But don't tell Prosecutor Blackwell, okay? Wow, and Prosecutor Blackwell usually has you on a short leash, too. Well, uh, never mind that. <laughs> I thought you should know that there was a witness. Witness? Don't tell me it's the director. I have a feeling it was the director. Could you tell us more about this witness? Sure thing, the witness was a Space Center employee who was on the fourth floor. Oh, it was a lady. While she was climbing down, she looked through a window to the third floor lounge. So she was looking into the crime scene from the outside. That's right! It was just a matter of chance that she saw something important. Not that I know uh, what she saw exactly yet, though. You don't, but that's the most important thing of all. <laughs> don't you worry. I'll get around to interviewing her soon enough. She should still be somewhere here in the Space Center. You might even run into her. Fourth floor employee, huh? All right, thanks for the info, Detective Fulbright. Gee, you sure are being competitive, Detective. A little too competitive, even. Yes, well, actually, I, uh... Something you can't talk about? Yes, uh, something like that. Anyway, never mind. Don't worry about me. Well, I'll be on my way now. Mm, that seems a little weird. 
What was that all about? Something is definitely going on. I'm going to get it out of him the next time I see him. Uh, okay. I'm not so sure he'll talk about it, though. Well, we have permission to investigate now. Let's head back to the boarding lounge. <laughs> okay, I guess we're just heading back to the boarding lounge. This is pretty straightforward. Okay. Ah, you two! Detective Fulbright has granted your, uh, you permission to investigate. He also said I should bring you some snacks or give you a neck rub, too, uh, if you'd like. Oh, uh, that's all right, but thank you for the offer? Well, time to roll up our sleeves and start investigating. Now, let's see. Where's that diagram again? So this lounge is on the third floor of the main building. And according to Apollo, this is where he believes a third party killed his friend. Well, let's stop the recap and start looking for traces of this third person, then. You read my mind, Athena. We'll make that our first priority. Just one problem, though. Uh, this room... It's just so big. Don't worry, we can use this to help us. A space center pamphlet for tourists? Yep, picked it up at the entrance. Maps inside should come in handy. Let's see, yep, here it is, a map of the lounge. This is the door we went through to talk to the tech Detective Fulbright. Oh yeah, that's the door with the fingerprint recognition lock. Well, I guess this map will make things a little easier. Hey, there's the control room, which happens to be very close to this lounge and could possibly have a director in there that would kill someone. Oh yeah, this will make it a bit easier. Space Center pamphlet added to the court record. Yeah, no more excuses. Let's track down the third person. Wait, uh, there's just one more thing. What's that strange creature moving around outside the window? Oh, boss, it's just a holographic image. Oh yeah, I knew that. It's a relief. There should be a button somewhere in this room to turn the image on and off. That's what it says in the pamphlet anyway. Hm. The only reason you're so eager to start is so you can push that button, isn't it? And what's wrong with that? Let's just look for the button while we're looking for clues. All right, fine, let's get to investigating. Okay, well, first things first, body. So this is where they discovered Clay. Yeah, he was already dead when they found him. Let's take a look at the photo. So we stretched out like this and, huh? What's that thing that looks like a thermos? Oh yeah, Phoenix wasn't there during the trial. Uh, that's the thing Prosecutor Blackwell mentioned when I was in court with Apollo. He said that contains asteroid samples. Oh, right. Detect Director Cosmos mentioned something about that, didn't he? That they were brought back only five days ago by that probe the Hat-1 launched. I wonder what they look like. Do you think they'll let us see? Let's think about that after we've solved the case, okay? Yeah, we gotta... Gotta take care of things. Um... What is this? Is that the button? That's some pretty futuristic looking furniture over there. According to the pamphlet, those are no ordinary chairs. They're like amusement park teacup rides. You can power them up yourself, it says. If you spin the table, your chair spins too. Why would anyone want to have something like that here? It's for astronauts who have trouble with the device on the ceiling. No vertical spins. It says it's a training device that's easy on the eyes and the body. Can a person really call themselves an astronaut if they can't handle zero G? I mean, this is very true, but... At first glance, it looks like a peaceful landscape, but then there's that creature? Didn't the Hope Probe go to some planet? Maybe this is what the surface looks like. I don't know, I think it would have made the news if they discovered a creature like that. It did make quite a bit of news, though, when the probe came back. Yeah, but the Hope Probe didn't even go to a planet. It went to an asteroid. That's a big rock kind of thing. Even aliens can't live there. Wow, Athena. And I thought you were smart with your brain. Uh, is that an actual window? A window, and it's right next to the holographic image, too. I bet it's here to help people see the stark contrast between reality and virtual reality. Way off, it says emergency ventilation, you know, to clear smoke from a fire. 
See, it's pointing out the virtual insanity of reality. Okay, Athena. So it looks like there are three doors that lead in and out of the room. Well, let's check. Drum world, please. Ta-da! The Space Center pamphlet. We're here at this place that says Boarding Lounge 1. Yeah, three doors. Let's call them Lefty, Righty, and Downy. People usually say West, East, and South in a case like this, you know. Details, details. Anyway, look at... Okay, West Door. That leads... Yep, that leads to Launch Pad 1. Launch Pad 1 Corridor. Yeah, we were in the still filled with smoke after the explosion. Right hand side is east in your world. The, you're in the world too. That's the door with the satellite dish icon to signify communication, AKA the control room. Yep, definitely says control room. Look, it's like it has another door on the opposite side. They communicate and exchange information with rockets and probes in space from there. So it's the center of the space center, the space center center, if you will. Does everybody start to talk like Director Cosmos after they've been here a while? But it seems that they built a new command center on the sixth floor. That's what they used for the Hat 2 mission, so this control room was empty at the time. I've always wanted to see the inside of a mission control room, and since we're here... I'd love to do that too, but it doesn't look like we'll be able to. They want to keep curious kids like you out. So the door is protected with fingerprint recognition. Only the director can go through. Does that not seem incredibly suspicious? With that much security, I'm definitely not the one they're looking to keep out, Athena. So apparently the lock is also hooked up to a backup generator in case of emergencies. <laughs> Control room lock door added to the court record. Okay, what about that last door? Uh, this lower door, oh, excuse me, I mean south door, leads to the elevators. Oh, this is the door we came through when we entered this room, right? Yep, and of course, there was no fingerprint recognition device, so it's open to anyone. The elevators weren't working at the time due to the explosion. Well, that's about it for the three musket doors of my boarding lounge. Thanks, understanding the layout of the lounge should help us understand the case. I thought we'd better have a good grasp of where all the doors go. Also, we're looking over here. What the hell is that? Is that dirt? Oh, it's... Hello? What is that? Oh, that's... Oh, it's a moonwalky thing to make you... Here's another amazing piece of equipment. Walk on the surface of the moon, it says. Oh, boy. I want to try it. Gravity is weak on the moon, so I bet I could do mid-earth somersaults. We're still on Earth, remember? Besides, it's connected to the ceiling. Well, at least I could jump really high. There's a sign on the wall that very clearly says, don't jump too high. Then what good is this thing? Uh, didn't I say in the beginning, walk on the surface of the moon? Jesus. Okay. Danger. <gasps> I see a shimmer. Hey, I see something shiny down there. Let's take this cover off then. That's a bullet! What's this? It looks like a metal jelly bean. It's a... Athena, my fucking god, are you a lawyer or not? It's a bullet. <laughs> it's really small, but it's a bullet. It's only about two to three millimeters in diameter. Let's see, that would make it ca the caliber 10? Er, point 10? Caliber refers to the diameter of a gun's barrel, right? Yes, but I've never heard of a point 10 caliber gun before. Well, the, well, there's 10 millimeter. It's a real thing. Well, it must be for a special kind of gun. Bet if you tried firing a bullet this small with a regular sized gun, it would just fall right out. Yeah, it must have been a really small gun. I wonder how the bullet ended up here. I mean... We're on the bottom left of the south door side of the room, according to this map. That's pretty far from where Clay's body was. Maybe the police didn't think to look here. Yeah, leave it to Detective Fulbright to accidentally hand us just the card we needed. Bullet added to the court record. Okay, well. is it, I don't know. They said it's like a point ten, which sounds ins insanely small.
So finger breaking, maybe toe breaking. Oh, let's check the door. So this is the fingerprint recognition device. Guess you could put your hand on this mark. Why guess when you can try? Now to line my hand up with the outline. Don't, Athena, this thing is related to the case. Get your prints all over that and the next thing you know, you'll be named as a suspect. Ah, uh, how can you be so cruel to a little girl like me? I'm not buying into those tears, Missy. Let's see, this door is, where's that pamphlet? It's obvious it's the, yeah, here we are. It's the door that, the corridor that leads to launch pad one. We went through it earlier when we were, went to talk to Detective Fulbright. So I guess the security lock must be disengaged now, right? They say the corridor was filled with smoke at the time of the bombing. It's the thing beside the door it must be the fingerprint recognition device. I, do you think? Which reminds me, I think Prosecutor Blackwell talked about that at the trial. Yeah, the notion of a third party because yeah, fingerprint, yeah. Then does this mean the bomber's prints were verified by the system? But the number of authorized personnel was supposed to be really small. Voila, fingerprint powder. I brought it up just in case something like this came out. Wow, we finally get to do this again? After how many years? I found it at the office. I've been just itching for a chance to use it. Wow, way to think ahead. Now let's dust the fingerprint recognition device and see what we can find. You got it. Now to sprinkle some here and over here and... F oh, wow, we don't even get a mini game. Yeah, teeny weeny pistol. Let's see what we have here. Oh, we got something. Uh, it's only a single set of prints. Uh, isn't that a good thing? Sure, I wish we could figure out whose prints these are. Although, I doubt we'll be so lucky as to get the culprit's prints on the first try. Well, I'm willing to bet that Detective Fulbright has some print fingerprint data. Right, and there's the security footage of this door, too. Yep, here it is. It came out in court the other day. Wish you could see the part of the footage just after this bit. Oh, because that would be right before the murder, wouldn't it? Let me ask the detective. Well, let's ask the detective. With the mood he's in, he'll probably show it to us right away. Yeah, he's in almost too good of a mood today. Let's go see if we can find him again once we're done with this room. This must be the security camera that recorded the astronauts making their escape. Food eaten. Welcome back. I'm glad you had food. Oh, let's commemorate this occasion with love and peace. You're done now. Shall we move on? Yeah, okay, but just one more for the road. Peace. Very mature. Damn. Boy never done had a dream. Um. I already looked at the door. I already looked at the fingerprint device. I already looked at all these. Why is it not showing it as completed? Oh, just because it lets me zoom in. Okay, I was like, let's turn that way. Oh, let's turn that way. Pod! These are apparently oxygen capsules. They're for recovery after a training session. I wonder if they can change your voice. Testing, one, two, three. Huh, it didn't do anything. Uh, it's not helium, Athena. It's oxygen. Man. For somebody who is a smart science person, she's not a very smart science person. No matter how I look at it, all I can think of is torture device. But I guess it's training device for getting used in, uh, to zero-g gravity. Uh-oh, Athena has an odd glint in her eye. She's thinking about trying that thing out. I should try to stop her. But I'm afraid she'll just outmuscle me. Hey, Mr. Wright, look up at that up there. Oh. Some kind of fragment. It's stuck tight. Oh, so that's what the glint was all about. That looks familiar. I think it's a part of an oxygen tank. 
think you're right, but if that's here, it means Clay's tank ruptured after they arrived at the boarding lounge. I bet that somebody shot his oxygen tank with that tiny bullet and it exploded. And that probably knocked him out. So Prosecutor Blackwell's theory that Mr. Starbuck dropped Clay down the ladder must be wrong. This proves that both of the astronauts were alive when they reached the boarding lounge. So Apollo was right. The scene of the murder wasn't the launch pad. Hee <laughs> hee, way to go, Apollo. Oh, examine. Some kind of panel with two buttons on it here. Just push it. That's the invariable principle of buttons. Big as hell, a tiny button. Well, I mean, even with enough force, it could still rupture it, though. And I mean, even if it's a tiny bullet, it still would have a massive amount of force behind it. You know, it could still pierce things or at least like rupture the tank enough so it exploded on its own. I don't know, those oxygen tanks didn't look as thick as normal ones. There's such things as buttons left unpushed. Oh, now it's boring. Hey, the giant holographic image disappeared. Yeah, though that side of the wall seems kind of barren without it now. Still, let's see if we can't find anything new with the image off. Okay, then let's turn around. With the holographic image off, the screen is completely black, which, for some reason, makes me think of losing an argument to Prosecutor Blackwell in court! But at least it's got my brain revved up. I come up with my best ideas at times like these. Oops. Oh wait, was that there before? Oh, a mirror! How thoughtful of them to put one here! Thoughtful? So the ladies can fix their makeup! One's appearance is just as important as in space as it is on Earth, you know. You never know when you're gonna run into some other life form after all. I doubt anybody who thinks like that would ever become an astronaut in the first place. I don't know. Uh, and only dent. I don't know. We'll, we'll have to see. I don't know if it's like a different material or, or what. Because that, that really doesn't look like a very thick tank. Aha! Bullet! Or another chunk. Hey, Mr. Wright, take a look at this. Looks like a bullet hole. Great find, Athena. It's pretty big. Whoever fired the shot must have used a pretty large gun. You think so? Based on my experience, I'd say this was fired from a regular pistol. Well, whatever size it was, somebody fired a gun in here, right? Apparently. This is an important fact. Do you see a bullet anywhere? No, the police might have taken it, though. We just looked at that bullet. No, we have the bullet! It's right there! In front of the bullet hole! A single bullet hole was found in the boarding lounge. The bullet itself is missing. And the thing is, it's glass. So even if you use a smaller bullet, there's a chance that it could make a bigger hole just from, like, the chunks that fall off after. Let's ask Detective Fulbright about this bullet hole later. Okay, well... Oops. Look at the screen just close up and see what they have to say. The holographic image off the screen is, uh, okay, it just makes me think of Blackwell. Wait, is there anything else here I missed? Oh, this. What the hell? Oh, it's garbage. What's this, a trap door? It's a trash chute. The cleaning robot throws the garbage out from there. The robots do the cleaning. What a futuristic world we live in. I just hope they don't revolt like they do in the science fiction movies. No way, all the robots here are very nice. Actually, wasn't there one in the launch pad one corridor? We can go say hi to it if you want. I guess I should probably go back there. Oh wait, yeah, that. I wonder what this big knob is for. It looks like the knob on a stove. Well, it's the same shape, but I think that's where the similarities end. I mean, it's behind a glass pane. What kind of stove would require knob security like this? You didn't know nothing about guns. It's okay. Well, the knob is straight up and down, so if it was for a stove, the burner would be off. Right. 
If it was for a stove. So I wonder what it's really for. Something turned on by a knob that's not a stove. Hmm, how about a rocket engine? You had to start the engine here. The rocket would take off before you could get in. Uh, then I guess all we can say for now is it's a mystery knob. Maybe fire suppression? It's okay. Well, you should know. I don't understand how you don't know more about guns, RC. Don't you absorb the things that Zunder says when he talks about guns? You know they shoot. That, I guess that's all you really need to know. Oh, here. I can actually do a thing. Never mind. The voice. Okay, maybe I updated it because of the voices. Where's the voices? Welcome to the Space Center, guests. Welcome. <coughs> Yikes, what in the world? My name is Pongo. 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 Are you sightseeing? Are you lost? Are you looking around? Choose one. I will guide you. It's a robot? I am not a robot. I am Pongo. Psychological Observation and Navigation Companion. P-O-N-C-O. -O, Pongo. Well, I'm glad we got that cleared up. Oh, Ponko, I've missed you! Huh? Do you know this thing, Athena? Oh, uh, she, uh, showed us around the last time when I came here with Apollo. Oh, you're such a good girl, Ponko. That's a good girl. Okay. So, Athena just has a thing for robots. Oh, thank you, thank you. I'm so happy, so very happy. Wow, a guide robot. That's pretty cool. My name is Phoenix Wright. Nice to meet you. I don't know you. I don't know you. Um, ouch, that hurt. Oh, she has to register people she meets for the first time. Please, please register him, Ponko. Certainly. Commencing guest registration. Please tell me your name. A nickname is fine, too. His name is Phoenix. A bit overly familiar, but I'll allow it. Phoenix, please let me get a good look at your face. Oh, uh, sure? Yeah. Registering facial registration sequence complete. We are now officially friends. Nice to meet you, Phoenix. Huh, this robot is pretty cute. You made a friend, boss. Isn't it great? Phoenix, Athena, allow me to guide you right this way. Oh, goody. Let's go, boss. Go where? Okay, it is shortcutted. It's just, just... It's not showing up on the, um, on the thingy. I probably have to re-shortcut it. But that'll make things a lot easier. Yeah, well, I'll be. Oh, wow. What is this place? Is that rocket real? Damn. Welcome, welcome. The Space Museum is open to the public every day of the year from 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Learn about the history of our nation's space development and the Hat 1 project. The rocket is just a replica, but it's the same size as the real one. Space Museum? Oh, here it is on the map. Okay, so it's on the exact opposite side of the main building from Launch Pad 1. Space Center pamphlet updated in the court record. Three pages. Ask me anything, anything, I will explain. Like the face, yeah, yeah. It's fine. They already have my fingerprint, so I don't mind using fingerprint data on my phone. 
Wait, why am I trying to leave? Do I just- I talk to you. The hat won! This is quite the place! I can't believe we get to see a rocket this close up. This is a replica of the Hat 1 that was launched 7 years ago. It's exactly like the real Hat 1, inside and out. Its little brother, Hat 2, was supposed to launch the other day. I wonder if Ponko knows why the launch was cancelled. Over there is an exhibit about the launch seven years ago. Check it out. Check it out. Space suits, photos, newspaper articles. I'd like to come here again on a day off. Hey, doesn't that jacket look familiar? Hey, what's this a photo of? Oh, okay. Phoenix, that's the staff of the Hat One Project. Oh, there's Mr. Starbuck. He looks so young, so different. Ah, and that's, that's, uh, what is it, Athena? Is something wrong? Oh, n nothing. I just thought Mr. Starbuck looked really young too, that's all. Well, it was seven years ago, after all. So the young guy standing next to Mr. Starbuck is Clay Terran, the victim. So they were a mentor and protege even way back then. They create an encrypted hash on the image, then every time you use it, it just comes. Oh, really? Interesting. And he's even got one of the staff jackets. He looks just like a regular staff member. No, Clay was still a student then. He just borrowed one of Solomon's old jackets. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Clay would have still been in high school seven years ago. Gosh, everybody looks so happy. Mm, this space museum is great. What fantastic exhibits. This area used to be launch pad two. That's why the only entrance is on the third floor. Wouldn't it be better if they just made a new ground floor entrance instead? There was talk of it, but they had to scrap their plans because of the budget cuts. Budget cuts! Budget cuts! We need more money! Money! Who would record that kind of information into a guide robot? While it was in space, the Hat One launched a probe called Hope. The Hope probe collected some samples from an asteroid and returned five days ago. That's what Director Cosmos said, too. Told us it came back the day before Clay was killed. And here it is, the Hope Space Probe. Hmm, I think I've seen that logo somewhere before. Let's see. Oh yeah, the capsule that the victim was carrying. I think it had the same logo. I think it can be seen on the photo attached to the autopsy report. Maybe she'll give me some more info if I show it to her. Man, is this going to upset the robot? Uh, Ponko, do you recognize this capsule here in the top right? Checking register data. I know, I know. It's the Hope capsule. It was carried inside the Hope probe. It contained the asteroid samples, right? Yes, it was designed to store the samples gathered by the Hope probe. It's been stored in the safe in launch pad one ever since it returned to Earth. Weird. Yeah, it's because it's a robot voice. Also, hi, Seer. Welcome. Hope you're doing all right today. It must not be removed. It must not be removed. Uh, don't worry, Ponko. The people in charge already know what happened. They do? They do? I must ask them later. You just watched half of the Half-Blood Prince. Oh, nice. So the capsule was being kept in Launchpad 1, huh? 
Maybe Clay was trying to carry it safely after the explosion. The Space Center staff must have been really excited to finally get the capsule back. But it's a pity this incident occurred before they got a chance to check the contents. Well, the police took it as evidence, so they'll have to wait a little longer. Hope capsule added to the court record. But yeah, it's good to see you, Seer. We're working on a murder case. Where uh, Apollo's best friend got murdered, and we're trying to clear the name of the pilot that was with him. It's good to see you too. I know. Well, I mean, dang, you get to see yourself every day, so you're the luckiest person here, Seer. The way Space Center, the way the Space Center launchpad is set up is really cool. Would you like me to tell you about it? Would you? The setup of the launchpad? Go gentle on my spiky-haired mind. I want to know! I want to know! Phoenix wants to know, too! Great, now Athena's got a case of punkoitis. Alright, I will tell you then. But yeah, today's been pretty good. I just, I finished up the rest of my yard work. Um, well, the yard work. I don't have to do it. But I enjoy doing it, and it keeps me more active. And it was cloudy this morning, thankfully, so I got it done pretty quick. And I wasn't sweating too bad, but I still took a shower because I was still sweating. But yeah, now we're just doing, you know, stuff. The rocket is built right inside the launch pad structure. When the rocket is complete, it's moved along with the launch pad over the rails. Oh, wow, that's actually kind of cool. You need to clean the inside of your car, but it keeps raining. Yeah, no. That's how I felt about the lawn. I was like, I really need to do this. And then the day before I was going to do it, it would rain really hard and the ground would be soggy and gross. And I'm like, never mind. Hopefully it clears up for you soon, though. And brought into position at the launch site. Isn't it cool? Isn't it? We used to have a big budget, so that's how we could build it all. It's very cool. The ground set up like that suits an important place like the Space Center. Guess everyone is hoping for a bigger budget next year. Myself included. I'm guessing the whole thing is operated from the control room, huh? That it is. But it can also be operated from the new command center, too. Either way, the safety lock in the boarding lounge has to first be disengaged. I guess before a big move like that can be carried out, there are all kinds of procedures. I would love to see the launch pad being moved. Uh, when's the next one scheduled for? Searching data. All future plans have been put on hold. Because of the bombing and the murder, I'll bet. Which is perfectly understandable. Well, when was the last time it was moved? Searching data. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, that answer isn't in my database. I guess Ponka can only answer certain questions. Well, we certainly learned a lot about the Space Museum. Thank you, Ponko. You've explained everything very well. I love to explain. Thank you for listening. Thank you. You two are like old friends. It's hard to believe you just met recently. <laughs> it's because Ponko is so friendly. Well, what should we investigate next? Let's go find Detective Fulbright. We have things to ask him about. Let's see, the security footage and the fingerprint data, was it? Okay, then let's go back to the launch pad one corridor. Uh, I didn't watch any of it, but Zunder and RC, um, I think they watch it like religiously, so they definitely saw that. Bye, Ponko, see you later. Come again, come again. And don't forget to visit the gift shop. Poor Ponko, what a Dickinsonian life we are all forced to leave. Also, I thought I just heard thunder, but it's like bright as hell outside, so maybe somebody was moving something around. Uh, it's, uh, game's done quick. Something, the game's done quick. I'm really bad. Sorry. Summer Dame's game's done quick. There we go. I was like, uh... Quick, quick games. They did it. The corridor. 
with another cleaning robot who looks like it has no personality at all. Hmm. What should I do? Which path is the path of justice? There's Detective Fulbright. He still seems to be lost, even though it's a straight corridor. Let's hope he's still in a cooperative mood as well, then. If he doesn't cooperate, I'll, then I'll just have to use my powers on him. You mean that lady in distress bit? We found a bullet hole in the wall at the crime scene. You did? Our team found that too. It was Detective Arm who fired that bullet. What? De Detective Arm? That's right, a warning shot for the defendant. Was it really such a high threat situation that she needed to do that? I'm afraid I don't know the details. What with Detective Arm gone and all. But I thought there were two people who discovered the crime scene together. We already know Director Cosmos will testify, so tomorrow will be about what he knows. Hey, you're pretty smart. That's exactly what we're planning to serve as the main course. I hope it goes down easy. Fingerprint data. Uh, Detective, we'd like to run a comparison on some prints we found in the boarding lounge. Ah, oh, yes, I just happen to have compiled the print data of everyone related to the case. I can always make another copy for myself, so it's all yours. Consider it a gift. This is quite a bit of data. Well, when I said everyone, I meant it. Prosecutor Blackwell said to dig deep, so that's what I did. And it sure took a while, though. Whoa, he got Apollo in my prints. He even got prints for all the robots. I guess when Blackwell said to dig deep, Fulbright didn't bother to ask how deep. Ah, Clay's fingerprints are here too! Oh, your power went out? Oh no, is it raining where you're at? Or storming? Or is it just... Like, the weird thing is, even when it storms here for me, our power tends to go out, like, in the middle of a sunny day, and I'm just like, okay, I don't know what's going on. Yes. I personally, yeah, the glove. He, he had to get the fingerprints. Okay, that makes sense. Still can't believe you took off his glove to get his fingerprints. It's not raining that hard, you think? Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, well, you can't blame me for thinking they're important to this case. There are a lot of doors that require fingerprint ver verification in the lounge. So depending on whose prints we find, it can completely change the tide for both sides. That eh, makes sense. After all, the culprit's prints did get them past the fingerprint lock somehow. Oh, and take this picture. It might come in handy. Um, isn't this just a photo of the launch web pad door? Yep, but Prosecutor Blackwell seemed really interested in it for some reason. Hmm? What's so important about this door? <laughs> beats me, but boy, could you see the gears in his head go into hyperdrive at it. Sounds like this is gonna be a major point of, of contention tomorrow. Hey, don't forget about the print comparison, boss. Right, Detective Fulbright, do you think you could run the test for us right now? That is definite. okay. It is bright as shit outside and I'm hearing thunder. So I think it, a storm is going to roll in or something, but it's literally sunny aside. And I just heard like some thunder peal. So I don't know, hopefully we don't lose power because I don't know what's happening with Texas weather. Yeah, I'm just like, okay, cool. You can just leave it to me. In justice, we trust. It's acting I know. Hello? Okay, here we go. Well, it looks like it was Mr. Starbuck who opened that security door. Must open it when they went to go board the rocket. His heart must have been full of hopes and dreams for his space adventure right then. Okay, so it's got... 
his prints on it. Um, maybe present the tiny bullet. Something for the lost and found. I'll be sure to take care of it. No, 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 no. Okay, never mind. He's dumb. Okay. Okay. Why is he? Why is he an idiot? Okay, I can't think of anything else to present. Wait, maybe that. The victim went through all the trouble to save the defendant, and then he was mercilessly killed. Is there no justice in this world? Justice was trampled underfoot that day. That's right! Acts of justice and selflessness are not always rewarded. It pains me to say it, but I've come to realize the truth in that recently. I don't know. Well, I mean, I'd rather be in Florida. Not because Florida is much better than Texas, but because you're there, Seer, which automatically makes it better than Texas. Q for applause? Thanks. Sounds like he and his personal philosophy are going through a midlife crisis. Okay, um, present? Nope, lost and found. Okay, what else is there even to show him? I mean, I guess that's it. Well, let's move um, to the entrance. Oh, nope. That's playing Athena's theme. The lounge. Nope, she's back there again. I cannot escape her. The museum? Oh, now it's you. Uh, what if I go back? Oh, maybe I need to go to the detention center. Hi, Trucy. Sorry. Um, I need to go over here. Never mind. Oh, wait. Maybe I can present some stuff to him. You know anything about this piece of evidence? No? Okay. Well, I thought you said something about warning shot. You don't know anything about that. How about this tiny bullet? Wow. Okay. This man knows nothing. There's an unknown frontier out there beyond our little planet. I get so excited when I think about it, I don't know what to do with myself. Don't worry. You'll get the chance to go to space again once we clear your name. Right. You're right, I can't stay here. Ready for launch! Fire! Okay, I can't skip this. They just lift off, okay. Oh, I'm glad you're confident. The ceiling's no match for the soaring spirit of an astronaut. I have to admit, that was pretty stirring just now. Okay, so... Um, maybe I'm missing something at the lounge. Any ideas? So what do you think we should do next? Oh, that's right. What is it, Athena? I just remembered I forgot to go running today. I was so taken up with what happened to Apollo, it slipped my mind. Uh, that's not what I was asking. Okay. Okay, we've... It looks like we exam- Oh, okay. So, he tells you. The, who the- What the fuck? Does that have something to do with Fulbright? He already told me, like, everything. And I think I presented almost every bit of evidence. Yeah, he was killed. Okay, cool. When the explosions occurred, everyone was on the verge of panic. But the important thing is that no one from the general public was hurt. And it was all thanks to the evacuation effort we headed up. After that, you escaped the building yourself as well, right? Me? Escape? Nonsense! I wanted to run straight towards the blasts. It was the other detectives who stopped me. We gotta get you somewhere safe, sir, they said. I know you wanted to help, but it sounds like you were adding to your work to your fellow officers. Oh, man. Well... No, not that... Uh, back.
Okay, let me show some stuff to the robot. I'm sorry, I'm afraid I don't know anything about that. Oh, okay, no problem. Oh no, try to, no, don't hate you. I don't know, because when I went there, it was just, uh, it was still just Athena. I've apparently investigated everything in that room already. This facility is Yuri Cosmos' greatest achievement. Oh, I didn't realize it was the personal achievement of just one man. Director Cosmos taught me to say it like that. It's actually a facility for space development, but don't tell anyone I said that. How could Director Cosmos teach such a pure and innocent robot to lie for him? Okay, that didn't help at all. But maybe, maybe. You know anything about bombs? Oh my god. Okay, maybe. Oh, let me let me go there then. Cause I'm pretty sure if I go talk to Trucy, she's just gonna be like, "Let me shove it in my panties." I asked her any, any ideas. I I don't like that you can't investigate everywhere, but I guess this doesn't really have much to do with the case. Athena Sykes is fine. Hmm, what was that all about? Thought I'd better get fired up twice as much to make up for Apollo being gone. For starters. I thought I'd imitate him. So you were doing a voice workout, huh? Yep, you have to push your voice up from the pit of your stomach. Hold it! There's a contradiction in the witness's statements. You're really serious about this. Objection, you're lying. The true culprit is the judge. What, the, who's gonna hand down the verdict? Oh, I didn't think about that. Okay. <laughs> Do, 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 do. Uh, uh, oh, percent. Uh, she doesn't know anything. Uh, she's avoiding the topic. It has to be full. But that's the thing. I I swear to God, I presented like everything to him, and he has no other like leads. He's just here doing. Fulbright things, which means being bullshit. Maybe this? Nope. Uh. Yeah, I know, that's the thing. But I'm like, who the hell? Everybody was on the. Yeah, evacuated. But he doesn't know anything about, like, anything. Okay, now it's getting to the annoying point, like, in the other games, where I'm like, what the fuck am I supposed to be doing? Did I do the door? What do you mean the tape? What? Oh, you mean the... Okay. Yeah, I think I checked the door. Yeah, he said that. You mean the video? Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, because they did say something about the security footage. I hate the fact that it's on a CD, so I keep forgetting that it... They should have just put it on a VHS and I'd understand better. Or a thumb drive. Detective, about the security footage that was taken by the boarding lounge one camera. Oh, uh, that footage? Go ahead and ask me uh, anything you'd like about it. Is there any way I could see a little more of the part just after this? Easy as pie, I'd be glad to show you. Here we go. Okay. Um. Huh? The screen went blank. Yes, apparently the after effects of the explosion damaged the wires. So there's no footage after this point. 
<laughs> what? Okay, yeah. I mean, I should have known, but I was also like... Can you just say that in the first place? Yeah, because he's a fucking dumbass. I don't like Fulbright. I'm sorry. Ecstatic really likes Fulbright. I don't. I'd rather have Gumshoe. Because at least Gumshoe was just always like... He wasn't overconfident. He was just bumbly. And it was like, oh, there's Gumshoe. But Fulbright's like... Ha! Huh, full confidence! Here you go! And then it's broken. And he was like, ah I knew that! And I, yeah. I need to say something in the beginning, you dumb bastard. Okay, video showing the defendant and victim's escape from the corridor. The video ends immediately after this scene. Something definitely seems to be up with you, detective. You're unusually cooperative. Well, I figure if we work together, <laughs> we'll get that much closer to justice, right? But it seems like something's really been bothering you. You don't have some uh, ulterior motive, do you? What? I don't know what you're talking about. I would never do anything like that. Oh, he's lying. Oh, no. What? Oh, wait, because I'm Phoenix. And Phoenix has Cyclops. Oh. It's been a while. It sure has. But those are definitely Cyclops. Hmm? Did you just mouth psyched? Is there something I should be psyched about? Uh, no, no, psych lock. It's a system of locks on the secrets of a person's heart. I can see when people are trying to hide those secrets by using the power of this Magatama. Presenting evidence can break those locks and reveal any secrets they're hiding. M -m Mr. Wright! How much did they bilk you out for that piece of rock? If you've been swindled, I know some lawyers I can introduce you to. Actually, I basically stole this. Well, actually, no, I didn't steal it. More than capable of representing myself, thank you very much. It isn't some kind of fraud. It really works. A friend gave it to me a long time ago. But I guess seeing is believing. Allow me to show you. I can use the Magatama on him by touching X. Take that. Oops. Why are you being cooperative? I think you're hiding something, detective, so why don't you just tell us about it? Hmm. What to do? Which path is the path of justice? Detective Fulbright is really in agony. I bet this is the issue he's so torn up about. Uh, it's obviously justice! I really understand what's been bothering you, detective. I really do. Something happened that goes against your principles. Isn't that right? Yeah, what is he hiding? Uh, no! I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, until the explosions occurred, everything was just fine. Is that a fact? Yep, peaceful as peaceful can be. Everyone whistling a happy tune as they did their job. Uh, oh, hi! Welcome back, Pyra. How's it going? Yep, peaceful. Yeah, everybody's doing their job. You never saw a more relaxed guard detail for a routine rocket launch. I don't think the guard, tail, guard detail was as relaxed as you claim as long as this exists. Yeah, it's tight security. Like, security was tight. Tight like a tiger. Before the explosions, what was supposed to happen there was a rocket launch. And yet, security was so tight... They even brought in a special task force. I'd hardly describe that as a relaxed guard detail. You think you know a secret? We can't be sure. Yeah. Oh, shit. I skipped what he said. Did he just go, ugh? That's a word. 
N -n now hold on just one moment. The entire nation had their eyes on this extremely important rocket launch. That's why I was called in on a special security detail. As versatile as you are, uh, as versatile as you are, I can certainly believe that's true. But I say it's very strange that this person would be part of that security detail from the outset. Detective Arm specialized in bomb cases. The fact that she was here on hand means that you people knew there was the possibility that a bombing would occur. Oh, you got me, Mr. Right. Yeah, that's right. I'm right. Now oh, there he goes. All right, I concede you win. It's just as you say. A few days before the launch, they were warned about a potential bombing, but the plan to launch went ahead in spite of the threat. But why? What were they planning to do if someone got hurt or killed? Yeah, I know, I know. The decision to move forward wasn't exactly just, was it? How was the warning delivered? By phone and directly to Director Cosmos. But the police department instructed everybody to keep it under wraps. That's a big thing to keep quiet about. No wonder you were so upset. But it's not only that. I've been distraught about Prosecutor Blackwill as well. Prosecutor Blackwill? Well, as his handler, I'm sure you have a lot of difficulties. That's not it. It's a question of justice. I've been wondering about why he's allowed to stand in court. The reason why he's prosecuting, Detective Fulbright, please tell us everything you know. Oh, okay. I was wondering about this from like the start. Well, talking to you folks about it would definitely be breaking the rules. Never mind that. What are rules but things to be broken, right? No, not in the face of justice. Well, to tell you the truth, having a prisoner act as a prosecutor is highly irregular. I think we guessed that much. So why is it being allowed? I've been wondering and wondering about it. So you weren't told why either, huh? No, I guess that order came from pretty high up the ladder. Yeah, it, w it would have had to. But Prosecutor Blackwell told me once. The hunt I've been on for the phantom of seven years past continues even still. What? Seven years past? A phantom, huh? And not one of the friendly variety either, I gather. Haunted for seven years. Is he talking about Phoenix? What did Phoenix do to him? Uh, this phantom of seven years past. Any idea who or what he was talking about? Not a clue. But he seems to think that this phantom is behind this whole incident somehow. But wait a minute, he thinks they may be connected to this case? Yup, this case has way too many similarities to what happened seven years ago. For starters, that case happened right here at this very space center too. And in both incidents, a threat was issued via telephone. All right, Seer, I hope that you have a relaxing bath. So that's why Prosecutor Blackwell thinks this incident is the work of a phantom? Well, that's not the entire reason. I mean, if you want to talk about seven years ago. Were you even a... That's when Prosecutor Blackwell was found guilty of murder. That messy case is what started the whole dark age of the law. So you see how this phantom and Prosecutor Blackwell's conviction might be related. Yeah, I can see why he'd think that. 
This incident in the Phantom, not to mention Blackwell's past, it's almost inconceivable that they would come to a head here. Um, this might sound crazy, but Prosecutor Blackwell can't possibly believe Mr. Starbuck is this phantom person, right? I mean, he was acting kind of strange during the last trial and all. Yeah, because he actually said his shit. Not yet. I'm not ready yet. Hmm? No, I doubt he thinks Mr. Starbuck is his phantom but I do get the feeling that he thinks the defendant has ties to them. Which is why he's acting so impatient. He's got a personal grudge against Mr. Starbuck. And that's not real justice. Uh, okay, I can see why you're so torn. I've always trusted in Prosecutor Blackwell's judgments up until now. But this time, I'm just so overwrought about it all. If he's lost his ability to think rationally, I'm afraid it might lead to a false conviction. Never seen Detective Fulbright so tormented. This must be why he's so cooperative. Uh, don't worry, that's exactly what we defense lawyers are working to prevent. I feel bad for Prosecutor Blackwell, but I'm going to be rooting for your team this time. But uh, don't tell him that. You have to promise me you won't. Detective Fulbright, I guess I was wrong about you. I swore to reform Prosecutor Blackwell and make him a valued member of society again. So I can't just sit by and watch him give in to his emotions and tear the defendant apart. You are the one, only ones who can stop him in court. You really care and want what's best for Prosecutor Blackwell, don't you, Detective? Leave the, cor er, leave the courtroom to us. It's not like we want a guilty verdict either. I was hoping you would say that. I'm really grateful to the two of you. To show my thanks, I'll give you another bit of information. It's about the eyewitness. I saw her hanging around the Space Center entrance a little while ago. R really? Then let's go find her, Mr. Wright. Thanks, you two. I feel a lot better now that I've been able to get that off my chest. Oh. It's currently raining. Not very hard, mind you, but I can see it, the drops forming on the ground. I'm going to work extra hard to find that perfect piece of evidence for you. In justice we trust! On three. One, two, three. In justice we trust. Okay, later. Okay, bye. Pretty sus, Fulbright, unless he has more. I don't know. I'm not sure, actually. But I'm guessing that it's just like we're getting closer to Blackwell going away, so he wants to figure out what happened before it's too late. There he goes. Wait, were we supposed to say Injustice We Trust back there too? Let's go see that witness now. All right, the Space Center entrance it is. Okay. The witness must be around here somewhere. Who are you? You're different. Hello, hello. Uh-oh, don't tell me the witness is a robot. Hello, come over here. Hello, hello. Are you sightseeing? Are you I I I am Clonko? Shall I guide you? <laughs> guide you? Oh, this is a creepy robot. I don't know why, but this robot is kind of freaking me out. Hey, you're not supposed to be wandering around. Hey. Oh, it's the other lady, the pokey lady. Again. Hmm. I've had it with you, you hunk of junk. Die! I'm outside. Am I wandering? When did that happen? Okay. Welcome back, hunk of junk. You don't know how close you came. If you didn't snap out of it, I was going to put you on the curb on trash day. Nothing works better than a 42.5 degree karate chop. That's pretty specific. Uh, excuse me, but are you the one who witnessed the murder? Oh, and I'm Phoenix Wright, the lead attorney for the case. How do you do? Yeah, she is really pretty. 
I'm scared because sometimes actually no most of the time when there are pretty women in this game they are fucking insane oh hmm big shot lawyers huh I'm Aura Blackwill oh sister older young another Blackwill oh yeah I'm a researcher developing robots here at the Cosmos Space Center. B Blackwell, could she be? And this good for nothing robot is named Hunk of Junk. My name isn't Hunk of Junk. My name is Clocko. That's me, Miss Aura. Quit complaining. Your model number is Ponko 2. Ah, but Miss Aura, everyone calls me Clocko. Quit your squawking already. Oh no, she's in his head! What are you doing? No, what are you doing? No, don't! There, bet she won't be talking back now. What did you just do? Yeah, I will obey completely. Yikes, I better watch what wires I cross with this one. Your last name. Your last name is Blackwill. Do you have a relative in the legal profession? You are correct. Simon Blackwill, who used to be a prosecutor, is... Shut up. Only speak when I order you to speak. Simon is my little brother. You know him? Little brother? How? Wait. Oh, wait. He's only 28. I keep forgetting. It feels like he's... He looks like he's way older. She's 37. Wow, okay. Well, I guess she has the look of a mature woman, and she also has a mole, which makes her... Yeah. Clonko? Clonko. One of the robots developed by Aura, who refers to him as... Heap of junk. Wow. Uh, yes, we met him in court a few times, right, Athena? Uh, Athena? What a dull creature. Has her switch been turned off? Athena being shy? This is new. Is Athena into strong, scary women? Oh yeah, I heard he was prosecuting again, despite being a prisoner. Why doesn't he just stick to solving disputes among inmates in prison, right? Hm. Oh, do you not like him? Hey, what do you think, hunk of junk? Ah, Miss Aura, that hurts! I'm asking you a question. Why don't you ask me, a useless hunk of junk? But Miss Aura, you told me only to speak when you ordered me to speak. I told you to never talk back to me. You're worth more as scrap. Damn. They did a really good job with her model, though, because, I mean, this chick hot. Not to say that other artwork, but, I mean, look, she's just got, like, I don't know. Yeah, she's probably by. I mean, her and Junie. Although Junie only really likes, you know, Apollo. Robot abuse, hawk attacks, Blackwell family life must sure be interesting. Well, do you have any other questions? Wait, of course you do. You're a lawyer. Yeah. It's not like I'm on Simon's side or anything. I just want to get this over with. So, you're the pers person who witnessed the incident. That's right. I was on the fourth floor of the main building in the robotics lab. The explosion disabled the elevator, so I lowered my emergency ladder like the detective leading the evacuation told me to. But it was such a pain! Why couldn't they have used the ladders in the other rooms? Must have been a very troubling experience. Probably best to just humor her here. I mean, this chick just, she strikes me as a dom for sure, but I don't know. Maybe she's just a robot dom. Then as I passed by the third floor boarding lounge one window on my way down, I saw the crime as it happened. And, well, that's about it. So you saw the crime as it happened and that's about it. I see. Wait, what? You saw it being committed? This is no time to just nod and repeat. So you saw into the third floor lounge. The very scene of the crime. That's right, there's a small window on the right-hand side of the room. I looked through that from the outside. The room was pitch black, but I saw a shady figure holding a lighter in their left hand, and a knife in their right. 
That must have been the culprit. Did you see who that person was? Of course not. The power's out on that floor. Then, and there was only that tiny window. I don't know, you say tiny, but that window's pretty big. I see, but did you witness the moment of the murder? Yes, I saw the figure with the lighter raise their knife and... It happened at precisely 10 a.m. Did you witness anything else? Did the killer have any distinguishing features? I already told you it was pitch black in there, although... I did notice that the lighter the person had in their left hand had a pretty ornament on it. It looked like a planet. It was blue, like a little Earth emblem. They had good taste in knickknacks, anyway. An Earth emblem on the lighter, I better remember that. Or a statement added to the court record. Thank you for your statements. We'll definitely prove Mr. Starbucks' innocence with it. <laughs> yeah, right, I won't hold my breath. Uh, pardon me? Oh, did I hurt your feelings? Sorry, I just detest lawyers, that's all. What don't you like about lawyers? It's just an instinctive dislike. But don't feel bad, I hate prosecutors even more. That didn't make me feel any better, actually. Why you hate lawyers? Why do you hate lawyers so much? Little thing from my past. The whole legal system is meaningless in the first place. I certainly don't agree. I mean, people are imperfect. They lie. They're influenced by silly emotions. You can't expect such imperfect creatures to uphold a reasonable system of law. I like robots much better. Even sad sacks like this one. Hey, you look alive there! Um... Um... Ah, yes, yes, here I go! I am the ultimate robot! It's amazing! I can operate in a vacuum! We're robots from the world! Alright, that's enough out of you. You're getting a little too carried away. Ah, huh? What was I doing? Yep. I like robots much better. At least you can make them any way you want them. Unlike humans with their petty emotions and constant worries. How can you say such things? Feelings, emotions, worrying about things we care about, that's what makes us human. Well, the girl finally talks and she starts with this speech. That's what makes us human? You mean getting angry and snorting like that? Rational thought, that's what separates humans from animals. Unfortunately, your reasoning capabilities are more akin to that of a clever little monkey. Whoa, is she going all out? But that's nothing to be ashamed of. Must be nice to have such a simple mind. Oh, can I punch her boss? Get a hold of yourself, Athena. She's got an actual gun. <laughs> For shocking. Uh, humans certainly are absurd. I said you were clever, didn't I? Poor thing. Tell me, with people like you in charge, how can I possibly trust the legal system, hmm? So she distrusts not only lawyers and prosecutors, but the whole legal system. What in the world happened to this woman to make her so bitter? I don't know, maybe that incident seven years ago? Even if somebody important to me was killed, I would never wish to see their killer brought to trial. Because I'd much rather kill them myself. Oh! You can't be serious. Hmm? That thing you're wearing around your neck. Oh, th this? Around Athena's neck. Does she mean widget? Oh, I get it. Well, well, her royal highness has returned at last to her castle. Her royal what? Is she talking about Athena or widget? By the way, I heard rumors. Our director is going to be the star witness in court tomorrow, right? Uh, Director Cosmos. Yes, that's right. You poor things, you'd better be careful. That old man is a big liar and a huge braggart. What? He might seem like a bigwig, but the center has all kinds of problems. He has a lot of skeletons in his closet. But it's your problem, so why should I care? Why is it suddenly filled with liquid? What is happening? What? Well, that's it? Just friendly tips? No good luck, guys? Just splendid. I'll leave you to your woes. Come on, hunk of junk. All right, man. 
it's sad to, to me that she doesn't believe in our legal system anymore. She must have had a very bad experience to make her feel that way. Are you all right, Athena? You seem very down. Uh, I can't just believe she said all those things. Wow, she's really upset. Has she been trying not to let it show all this time? Well, I guess it's not all that surprising. You hear about fabricated evidence and false indictments all the, on news all the time. You mean that whole Dark Age of the Law nonsense? I'm so sick of hearing about that. Me too, Athena. Well, all we can do is believe in what we're doing. Yeah, you're right, boss. I agree. Maybe it's time we went back to see Mr. Starbuck. Good idea. We should tell him about the bullet in Mrs. Blackwell's statement. All right, then. Next stop, the detention center. Okay, we're almost there. He's still sad. <sighs> My lawyers are here. Must be bad news. Hey, not necessarily. We found a new witness. A researcher saw the moment of the murder through the lounge window during her escape. Really? So they're gonna let me go? Uh, unfortunately, it was dark and she couldn't identify the person. <sighs> I should have known. My stars never align just right, too. Is it? Because it feels like it's still just as long. Well, the trial didn't take nearly as long. Granted, it was the first leg of the trial. So that never takes nearly as long as it could, but... We got a new lead, too, Mr. Starbuck. The murderer had a lighter with an Earth emblem on it. A lighter with an Earth emblem? Oh! Is there only one investigation phase? Because that would probably make it a lot shorter, because usually there's... Investigation, trial, investigation, trial. Did, did you remember something? Yep, I sure did. Eh, just a little bit, though. Anything at all would be a help, so please tell us what you remembered. I thought I was unconscious the whole time, but now I remember when I woke up for a few brief moments. Th that's huge! Do you remember seeing anything? A lighter. I saw a flame of a lighter floating in the darkness. Good, good. What else did you see? What was nearby? It was definitely the boarding lounge, so it must have been after Clay carried me there. Yeah, I know this is only the investigation part, yeah. In the light from the flame, I saw a dark shadow flickering. Oh, it's the only one, that's what you mean. Yeah. Okay, nice. Dark shadow, that must have been... The third party we've been looking for. Thank you, Mr. Starbuck. You've been more help than you know. If we can prove that there was a third person at the scene and that they're the real killer, then you'll be cleared of all suspicion. The key will be whether or not we can identify this third person in court tomorrow. At least we have something to go on now. That's... and that's a big plus. Hmm, I should probably tidy the evidence up a bit before someone mistakes me for a hoarder. Irrelevant evidence tidied up. Now that we have a glimmer of hope, I'm suddenly starving. Why don't we go back to the office and treat ourselves to a big celebration in advance? Someone who's highly empathetic, you can be surprisingly unsympathetic. Okay. So you found your strategy for tomorrow's trial, huh? Good for you, Daddy. Well, it's one step forward anyway. Hopefully it'll give us a fighting chance in court. As long as we can find out who this third person is. Now let's get something to eat. I'm starving. My vote is for Eldoon's noodles. Why do you love them so much? I, they're like salt incarnate. Oh, Apollo. Apollo, you're back. Hi, Apollo. What are you doing here? I didn't think the clinic was ready to release you yet. My wounds are fine, and I'm done lying around. Now I understand why he has that jacket, because that's his best friend's jacket. Apollo, you're supposed to be in bed. Leave the case to us. We'll take it from here. Thanks, but that's not an option. Not for me. Apollo? Your injuries. You shouldn't underestimate your injuries, Apollo, and I don't want you overdoing it. I'm fine. I'm not in pain anymore. Besides, they just gave me an IV at the clinic. An IV isn't a cure-all, mummy man. Anyway, just tell me how the case is going. Have you guys made any progress? A suspicious figure was spotted at the scene. We think they must be the real killer. 
Suspicious figure, huh? Right. Thought you'd be happier than that. Oh, don't get me wrong, I'm happy, and I fully intend to see Clay's murderer apprehended. Absolutely nothing will get in the way of that. Clay was your best friend, right, Apollo? That's right, best friend since junior high. Sounds like me and Junie. So what was Clay like? Well, he was full of compassion and energy, and he had a really loud voice. If the two of you did voice training together now, I bet you'd break a few windows. Ha ha ha, you know, I bet you're right. It seems like only yesterday, Clay was a guy who lived for his dreams. We used to talk about it a lot. He was going to be an astronaut and me, a lawyer. We talked well into the night, and even then, we never grew tired of it. Uh, Apollo, about that jacket. Oh, it's Clay's. I knew it. It's a special jacket that was only issued to members of the Hat Project. He was finally able to get one of his own once he was selected for the Hat 2 mission. He always looked so proud wearing it. Uh, but just when his dream is not fair! Oh god. Apollo? Uh... Sorry. Apollo, I hope you don't try to carry the burden all alone. I guess we're both unlucky. My own debut was a disaster. I uh, guess you're right on some level. That trial a year and a half ago wasn't exactly the smoothest of starts. That was a rough time for me, but Clay refused to let me quit. You're fine, he'd say. Don't give up. It was right during his screening exams, too. Couldn't have become a full-fledged lawyer without him. That you're fine of his. That always keeps me going. You're fine, huh? You're fine and I'm fine were like your catchphrases, weren't they? <laughs> Something like that sure brings back memories. When we were in junior high, Clay's mom passed away in an accident. But he wouldn't show his sadness to anyone. One night, I found him crying all alone in the school courtyard. Mom, mom. Get away, Apollo! Don't come over here! Wait, listen to me. I don't have a mother either. No, actually, you do have a mother. You just don't know it. You lied to your best friend. Your mother is alive and well. And not blind anymore. I always think everybody else has a mom. Why am I the only one? But you know, when I start to feel that way, I yell at the top of my lungs. I holler, I'm fine. And then you know what? I start to feel like maybe I really will be fine. Apollo justice is fine. Okay. Clay, now it's your turn. Um, okay. Clay, Taryn is... It's fine! There you go, now we're both fine. Ha <laughs> ha. We're fine. <laughs> we're fine, ha! Uh, what are you laughing about? See, we're fine. You laughed first. I'm fine. You're fine. We're both fine. Damn. Ha 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 ha. The laughter of the crazed. I mean, children. Thanks, Apollo. Oh. When you say it out loud, it really starts to feel real. And as long as you don't give up, you can keep on fighting. That's what we believe. As long as you don't give up. Wasn't there somebody else who said something similar? Yeah! Starbuck. If I give in to fear, I'll never find the truth. I'll never give up. They called Mr. Starbuck his mentor and looked up to him. Wonder if I can be a good role model for my staff like Mr. Starbuck. Well, you already have the pointy hair down that they look up to. Sorry, Mr. Wright, but I'll be taking a leave of absence. What? what Wait, what do you mean by a leave? You're really serious. Can you at least give me a reason why? When I put Clay's jacket on, I swore to him that I would catch his killer myself. But that's our goal, too. I agree with Athena. We should work together to find the truth. The truth, huh? That's a noble cause. But what if the truth you seek and the truth I seek turn out to be different? I... I'm not sure I follow. What are you saying, Apollo? I'm gonna catch the person responsible for taking my friend's life in my own way. With a gun. Take a care of Mr. Starbuck for me. Now I must be going. Goodbye. Well... Bye. Goodbye? Did he just say goodbye? I sensed a lot of seething anger and hatred coming from... 
And also, suspicion. Oh, he's not walking out on us like this. I'm gonna go talk some sense into him. Hold on, Athena. Apollo can believe what he wants, but I believe he's wrong. Even if we take different paths, the truth we arrive at should be the same. Also, hi, cat. Welcome. How are you doing? I think the quicker we solve this case, the better it'll be for Apollo. Yeah, you're right, boss. All right, that's enough for one day. Make sure you're ready for tomorrow's trial, okay? Uh, it looks like it's still drizzling outside. If you were here right now, Apollo would say, I'm fine, everything's fine. I just hope things really do turn out fine tomorrow. Whew. To be continued. Next segment, done. All right. Uh, and this recording.